into your people. We pray that, Lord, that you have your way, and that you remember each, each and every person in a special way today. Lord, today, many of the people here have asked prayer for the families. Many of the families are just struggling and going through issues of their life. Some have had real serious medical issues that have been brought to my attention. And so, Father, we pray for that. We pray, Lord, that you have your hand upon each of the families. We pray for all these needs that were called down in prayer today. Numerous needs. And so I pray for Debbie's mom. Remember her in prayer. I pray for Bev's family. I pray for, well, all of them. I pray for Larry's family. I pray for Sue's family. Also, I pray for my family. And we pray for our family, Lord, that you remember them. Lord, also others have prayed and asked for special prayer requests to be answered. And some are praying for needs. I pray for Mike, his body. I pray for John and his body. I pray that God, that you touch them and help them, God. Lord, I, I just thank you for all the times you've answered our prayers and answered our petitions. I thank you for those times, oh Lord God, because we know it's you that's the healer. We know you're the healer, Lord God, and we thank you and praise you and worship you and glorify you. We thank you again in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. How many believe Jesus is the healer today? Amen.
where our Bible study is February 24th. Hope you can make it out on Wednesday night. We start right at 6.30 and we end at 7.30 to give you a chance to get home uh, where it's not so late, okay? Daylight savings time starts again. I wish they had just ended completely. How about you guys? I'm, I'm ready for it. I don't mind getting that extra hour of sleep, but boy, I don't like losing that one. How about you guys? Uh, this is the one where you lose an hour, so I want you to know that. All right. And so anyway, if you notice, the, uh, we put something new in the bulletin, our new Horizon cash flow and attendance and the receipts that came in for the month. Our church is doing okay. Keep doing it. It keeps us out of, the, out of the red in the black, all right? And also today, we got someone that had a birthday. Her name is Debbie. How about that? Yeah. Debbie had a birthday. Happy birthday. To you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. We wish you many more. We wish you many more. We wish you many more. Happy birthday. $35 
my daughter this morning will be your opportunity to fulfill that, and I won't talk to you anymore about it because it will be a mission accomplished. Morning, uh, when, when you get up here and take the offering, remember, because I forget. Okay? Well, if you forget, you got to double it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really, I'm really proud to be a part of this fellowship. <laughs> because we've had some monumental financial chores yes. to, do, to, to, uh, to fulfill. Uh, the front door. That was a pretty spendy uh, offering. And we came through. We provided enough money to replace those doors in the front of the church. The baptistry in the back of the church, that was a real spendy one. That was several thousand dollars. The doors were not cheap either. But uh, we've come through. And we're not what you call a mega church here. We have a mega heart. <laughs> Yeah, I heard that. And I'm sure the Lord claps at that, too. Uh, so, and I believe, Rachel, did you have something you wanted to share this morning before I... Yes. Um, one of our terrific musicians, John, um, had uh, blessed us with uh, several um, meals, uh, readily prepared meals, and they're frozen, so if anybody um, wants to stop by, uh, we'll be in the fellowship hall after mm -hmm. church. Uh, That's now this morning, those of you that live in Emmett, Idaho, you will be listening about the same time we're right now on the air, except it takes a little while to get the, the service on the, on the internet, but it will be later today, and the folks in Emmett, Idaho will think, hey, we were there this morning. Woo! So, uh, I enjoy uh, being able to share where this ministry is going beyond the four walls of this church. Now this morning, I would guess there's probably 22 or three or four ladies in our congregation. We're, so we're still legal. We're allowed up to 25. Hopefully that will be taken away and we'll be able to have our full church back again. But in the meantime, uh, we'll, we'll abide by what rules we're supposed to follow. Uh, so this morning, I again will be reading out of Second Peter. Uh, as you notice, sometimes I I pick kind of a series, you might say. And uh, so this morning we're in Second Peter chapter three, and we will be picking it up in verse ten. Second Peter chapter three, verse ten. You never want to mark in your Bible these verses because this is end time prophecy. Now we understand what Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24, but Peter has a lot to say about the end time also. And so you might want to make a notation in your Bible. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away and a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness Looking for the hasting, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And there's some other references there, but we don't have time for that. Would the ushers come forward this morning to receive this morning's high of the Lord? Remember, if one of, whichever one of you is on this side, I do have an envelope to put in. Let us pray over the altar this morning. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for all that you do for us. Lord,
Lord, you've supplied our every need and even some of our wants this past week. And so, Lord, we give you praise and thanks for that. And now, Lord, is our opportunity to pay our tithes to you and to bring our offerings that we freely give to you, Lord. We bring them with cheerful hearts. And we ask this morning, Lord, you honor your word, and you will bless every cheerful giver. And continue, Lord, to supply and bless them with their needs this week. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you, Brother Lightman. Appreciate your help. She does a good job, doesn't she now? Amen. Good guy. Just thankful to be in God's house. How about you? Well, let me do a little one here for you. Sometimes it's 100, sometimes it's 150. 
there have been times it has reached uh, 300 or more, and uh, we have, uh, we're thanking God for that. We're thanking the Lord for that. And not only the people that come to the church, but they're watching us by our uh, Facebook ministry, we call it, all right? Facebook ministry. And we're just so thankful that they're tuning in and watching us and, and enjoying the presence of the Lord with us. Uh, my daughter has shared to me a lot of very positive things that are happening in her area, and we're just blessed. Not too long ago, uh, when this COVID thing was happening, I think she mentioned to me that she uh, she just made the whole family sit down and watch it. How's that sound? I like that. How about you guys? whole family had to watch it. So we're thankful for that. But, you know, to be truthful with you, uh, we believe we're offering something uh, that I call a last day ministry. I call it a last day ministry, my friends. I believe Jesus Christ is on the verge of coming back again. How about you? I believe he's on the verge of reappearing. I believe he's on the verge of coming back. And he's drawn people back to God. Amen. He's drawn people back to God. And I don't know about you, friend, but I want you to know God is important right now. If you have a choice to make, I hope it's for the Lord. Amen. I hope your desire is to be with God. I don't know about you, but I see a lot of transformations take place in the last several years. One of them was my brother in California. Oh, he was a he was a downright sinner. How many know what a downright sinner is? I tell you what, he was he was so bad of a sinner the devil didn't bother him. How's that sound? That's how bad he was. And I, I want you to know he was just a sinner, but he's come through the Lord. He's been giving God glory and God praise and how God brought him through uh, a cancer surgery and completely eradicated that cancer from him. And he's just giving God the glory. How many believe we should give God the glory? Amen? Especially when he does something like that. Another brother, not long ago, probably remember a year ago, he's on his deathbed. His lungs have completely gone. And he told me in his last dying breath, about a day or two before that, he said, I, I've accepted the Lord back into my life, Vernon. And I praise the Lord for that. How about you guys? Amen. No wonder the devil's mad at me. What do you say about that? No wonder he's mad at you. Because you're helping me. And when you're helping me, guess what's going to happen? The devil's going to get mad at you. He's going to cause all types of problems to come in your life. He's going to try to trip you up. He's going to try to get you off on the wrong foot. Get you all bent out of shape, angry. Angry at the world. Angry at somebody else. My goodness, that's what the devil's good about. Do it. Causing mischief and causing problems in people's lives. So I want you to realize that, okay? And this is why it's so important that you and I give our best for the Lord. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Give our best for Jesus. Amen. Allow Jesus to do what needs to be done in our life. Jesus be Jesus in me. Can you say amen to that? Be Jesus be Jesus in me. And today I want to talk to you about something the Bible mentions a lot about. And all of us have them. And some of us, we have visions and dreams of things that are taking place in our life. So I want to talk to you about dreams of the Bible today. Why these dreams come to pass. Why it happens a lot in our lives. Some of us, like, we have a dream and we don't understand it. But I want you to know, God, he gives these dreams for reasons. He gives them to people for understanding he gives us dreams. And sometimes these dreams are, are, are dreams or visions in the night while we sleep. Others is a dream he gives to us about uh, allowing things to proceed in a greater and positive way in our life. I don't know about you, but many of you probably had a dream of becoming something one time or another. How many know what I'm talking about? Or doing something one time or another. 
Maybe your dream was to be a doctor and you never was able to fulfill it. Or maybe your dream was to be a missionary and you wasn't able to fulfill that. Maybe your dream, maybe your dream was to be a rocket scientist and fly <laughs> to the moon. But it never did happen. But it was a dream. Some of you, your dream is to see your children just grow up and be normal. I mean, I'm doctor now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Some of you just dream of just being whatever it can be in your life and be happy and content with it. And so I want to talk to you about dreams today. Would you pray with me? Lord, yes. we pray over the needs of your people today. We pray that God has his hand upon each and every person. We pray that the Lord will touch each and every person in a wonderful way, God. We pray over their needs and desires today. We pray that God's Spirit will move upon us today. I pray, Lord, right now, God, that you touch us and help us and bring direction into our lives, Lord God. And Lord God, he that have an ear, she that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit may reveal to them. Let my eyes become your eyes. Let my heart become your heart. Let my ears be your ears, God. Lord, let my hands and my feet be your hands and feet. Lord, I completely submit myself to thy Holy Spirit, God, that you use me in this hour, Lord God. And I pray, God, that you give me the power of the Spirit, God, and help me, Lord God. And Lord, that you raise these people up and strengthen them today. In that mighty name of Jesus Christ, and everyone say amen with me. Amen. 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 So as we talk about dreams today of the Bible, the Bible explains lots of things about dreams. Not only kings had dreams, but ordinary people as well. The Bible today gives us special insights on why God gives us dreams. God speaks to us through dreams and visions, as well as through the, His Holy Spirit and by the Bible. Today's sermon is dreams. I know about you, but turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. Oh, Can you say amen? Yeah. I don't know about you, but get rid of that word out of your vocabulary called I can't. Yeah. And start memorizing another one that says I will. Can you say amen? amen. I can. Get rid of the T off of can't. And then it becomes can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Would you give him another clap? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't know about you, but I'm not, I, I'm not persuaded. I've already been persuaded, I should say. I'm persuaded to serve the Lord with all my heart, yeah. with all my soul, with all my might and strength. Just as you need to be persuaded to do the same thing. Amen. Amen. As we continue today, dreams are warnings. In the Bible we find in Genesis chapter 20 verse 1 that Abraham journeyed from there to the south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur. And he stayed in Gerar. Now Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. But Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is another man's wife. Sometimes God comes to you in dreams. And when he comes to you in a dream, he warns you. In this case, this king saw Sarah, Abraham's wife, how beautiful she was, how attractive she was, and he wanted her for himself. But God took very seriously on with on this and said, what you did is wrong. And he said, I will kill you if you touch this woman. You are a dead man. Not only you will die, but all your children will die. Everything that is in your household will die because you've touched 
this man's wife. You're about to touch her, he said. And guess what? God sends dreams to warn us. I want you to understand that. Sometimes he gives us dreams of hope, but sometimes he brings dreams of judgment against us. And in this case here, the king was in totally shocked because he had this dream. And this is what I want you to realize. Sometimes God allows us to see things and hear things we ordinarily would not see. God told Abimelech, you're a dead man. Whosoever, Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He who does so destroys his own soul. It's not right for you and I to commit sin against God. It's not right that we commit sin against one another. Someone say amen or oh me. It's important that you and I walk the straight and narrow. It's important that when you turn, you go straight to the Lord and you turn right and continue that walk of faith. Otherwise, turn right and go straight. Can you say amen? It's important that you and I put sin out of our lives. It's important that God forgives us of our sins. It's important that you and I walk in integrity as we should walk. I don't know about you, but if we keep our mind on Christ, we will not sin. Can you say amen? amen. If we keep God in our heart, it will keep us from sin. Can you say amen to that? So it's important. But the king saw this woman. He saw how beautiful she was. But the problem is, he saw a prophet's wife. And God was upset about that. He saw a preacher's wife. And let me tell you something, God became angry over that. God became angry over that when he saw a preacher's wife and lusted after her and desired her for his own. God took offense to that. God took great offense to it. And in the dream, he said, you're a dead man. You're a dead man. How many of you like to have a dream and all of a sudden in the dream a voice appears or God appears and says you're a dead man? Woo. Woo. Wouldn't you wake up and repent? Can you say amen? amen. How many of you would rape? wake up and say I need to find a church? Can you say amen? I need to find someone to pray for me. I need to find God. I had a person one time came to church said I need to get saved. Right in the middle of my sermon. Was here at this church. I mean, remember it wasn't too long ago. Mm -hmm. About 10 years ago or so. How many remember that? Yeah. Person came in and said, I got to get saved. Let me tell you something, my friend. I'd get saved too. And God appeared to me in a dream and said, You're a dead man. I don't know about you, but I'd find the altar. And I'd ask everybody to get in that altar and pray with me. I'd pray so hard. I'd get to the point I couldn't pray anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'd get down to mean business with God. And trust me, I have in the past. Amen. There's times God would whip, take me to the whipping shed. And guess what time I got out of that shed? I was aching and, and I was old. How many know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? I was feeling it. I said, oh, God, you I tell you what, you whooped me good, didn't you? I didn't complain about it, though. How many remember when your dad whipped you in the old days? Come on. Mm -hmm. You complained about it, you got another one. Yeah. How many remember that? Mm -hmm. You complained about it, you got another one. That's the problem with this generation. Nobody's whipping their kids anymore. Some say amen or oh man. Amen. They're not correcting their kids anymore. That's why all these little boys and girls turning out to be bank robbers and drug addicts. Why? Because we're not correcting them anymore. Amen. I just watched our viewership go from a lot to none. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling the truth. That's the problem with our country. Parents aren't in the same home anymore. 
Say amen or oh me. Amen. amen. It's not just two parents raising kids. It's, it's six or seven or eight parents anymore. They all get married to one another. Someone <laughs> say amen or oh me. Amen. Come on now. There's so much confusion anymore. So much confusion that nobody knows what's going on in their lives anymore. God comes up, I'm your dad. You're my dad. I thought this was my dad. <laughs> Wait a minute. That, that, I'm your dad. <laughs> identity crisis. Yeah. I call it a moral identity crisis. I don't know about you, but my kids know who their dad is. Can you say amen? Amen. They know who their dad is. Because I raised them up in my home. Someone said, boy, you must have, you and Sister Britt must have got along really good. Yeah, I like cat and dogs. Say <laughs> that old man. <laughs> Just like everybody else does. Yeah. <laughs> so true. But you know what held us together is love. Yeah. And putting God first. We don't get along like cat and dogs. <laughs> We're like best friends. Oh. Really, we are. Cool. We go everywhere together, do everything together. That's the way it's supposed to be, isn't it? Yep. Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield to you and your reward. You shall be very great. Genesis 15, verse 1. Bible says in Proverbs again, whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He who does so destroys his own soul. That's a warning. Abimelech explanation to God. He said, verse 4, but Abimelech had not come near her. Thank God. He said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart, innocence of my hands, I have done this. And God began to think about it and said, yeah, you said it, but I'm still warning you. You touch her, you're a dead man. You're a dead man if you touch her. That's why I'm saying it to you right now. Sometimes if we hear things or, or don't hear something, we think it's all right to go ahead and do it. Well, who's going to stand up to the king and tell him, well, that woman you took, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> That's another man's wife. Look what happened to a prophet one day when he told Herod, it's not lawful to have your brother's wife. I mean, remember what happened to John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Cut his head off. You don't go around and tell the president of the United States, well, guess what? That's another man's wife. You've done wrong. You said. We well, might get away with it today. <laughs> but in the old days, you said something like that to a king. Guess what? You come up missing. You ended up in a, in a dungeon that never, never see the light of day. Abimelech's explanation to God said this. I didn't, I haven't touched her yet, God. Yeah. He said, well, if you do touch her, you're going to pay. You're going to pay badly. You're going to hurt badly over it. I'm going to make your life miserable because I'm going to kill you. Let me tell you, when God comes out and says, I'm going to kill you, I don't know about you, but I would start thinking about repenting again. What do you say? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things the Bible does not want us to do. The Bible said, thou shalt not kill. Can you say amen? amen. Thou shalt not steal. Someone say amen or amen. amen. Thou shalt not lie or bear false witness against one another. Thou shalt worship the Lord. Hear ye, O Israel, for the Lord thy God is one God. Thou shalt worship him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Thou shalt not take
take any other God before me or bow to any other God before me. Amen. Thou shalt what? Love one another. Can you say amen? You know, that's a hard one for Christians today. Oh, I just can't stand that. Stand that woman. I can't stand that kid. <laughs> I, that kid is a brat. How many know what I'm talking about? I can't stand that. <laughs> that Larry, he is so disgusting. <laughs> he is a disgusting brat. <laughs> that Pastor Pruitt, he's worthless. He's worthless than all get out. How many know what I'm talking about? How many have heard of him? Mm -hmm. That's not love. That's not love sitting there criticizing somebody, telling everybody how disgusted you are at them. Hello? <coughs> Jesus said, likewise, you shall well love one another. So if you love God, you need to love your brother. If you love God, you need to love your sister. John said in the epistles of John, he said, how in the world you say you love God and, and hate your brother, whom your brother you have seen, but God you've never seen? How in the world can you say you love God and you've never seen him? And your brother you have. I will tell you why the church isn't winning the souls like they used to. Because we don't have that love of God anymore. And we don't have that fear of God anymore. Someone say amen, old man. Amen. Amen. We don't have that fear of God. We don't have that love of God anymore. As we continue, Bimelech interacts with God. Bimelech's dialogue with God while he's having a dream. He explains the condition of his heart. God listened to Abimelech and responds to him. To this is what I call an interactive dream. This is a dream that you can turn around and talk to God in it, and God will talk back, back to you. Have you ever been in a dream like that? Yes, I have. I've been in a dream like that. I told you about the dream. And not only that dream, but many dreams. One of the dreams I remember, I wandered into the Lord's camp. I probably told you this. I was going through some really struggles. I think it was Pam going through all those hospital problems. How many remember that about two, three years ago? And one after another, one after another. In the dream, I wandered into the camp of the Lord. And while I was in the camp of the Lord, I saw the Lord and I fell at his feet. And I began to worship and glorify him and praise him. And I was in my white robes of righteousness. I remember wearing the white robes. And he reached down and he picked me up. And he holds me. He said, don't worry. He said, I got this all under control for you. And as he held me, all of a sudden the armor of God came on me. And it became white and glistened. It was so beautiful to look at the armor of God. It completely, completely covered me. The helmet, the shield of faith, everything, the sword. He said, now I'll give you something to destroy your enemies with. And the next thing, I appeared out of the <laughs> camp of the Lord. And as I appeared into the, the camp of the devils, I call it. Three demon strongholds. One was so huge and big, it was the, it was formed like a diamond. How many know what a, or not a diamond, but a pyramid? It was formed like a pyramid. There was two here and one at the top, large, huge one. And all of a sudden, as I began to wander through the camp of the enemy, instantaneously they'd been shelling me with all types of weapons of warfare, trying to destroy me. But the spirit spoke out, says, look what's happening to you now. And I said, nothing. Whatever they're hitting me with is just like it's bouncing off of me. It would hit me and fall to the ground or dissolve 
or it'll obliterate into dark dust, I call it. And all of a sudden he said, take the sword. And I took the sword and I began to sweep back and forth and begin to cut down the enemy. And I told you this several times. He said, now let go of the sword when you throw it. And I threw the sword and it went like a boomerang. How many know what I'm talking about? As the spiral that began to cut the enemy into thousands and thousands of pieces and destroyed them and decimated them. I decimated the large camp. And before I knew it, I started on this one and decimated it. And finally, the third camp, as I began to decimate it, the enemy began to flee. And the Spirit said, look how many ways they're fleeing. And I count each of the ways, as the Bible says in the book of Psalm, the enemy will flee seven different ways. I watched the enemy fled. Seven different ways. They will come at you three way, at three, but they will flee seven. By the time it was over, I was snatched out of that vision or that dream. But I remember interactively working in it and being in it. Gives you an idea how these happen. As I continue, God uses dreams to keep us from committing sin. And Genesis 20, verse 6, And God said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. For I also withheld you from sinning against me. God said, I withheld you. You would have done it anyway if I had not withheld you. Sometimes God will withhold. Hold us from committing sin. Can you say amen? Aren't you, aren't you glad you have a merciful God? God withheld this king from committing sin. Yes, I know you did this in the integrity of your heart. Don't fool yourself, God said. I know your heart. For I withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. He said, I will not let you touch her. Otherwise, he warned him. He said, you get near her, I will kill you. I will strike you dead. I will strike you deader than a dead. You get near her, I'll strike you so dead, you'll never be able to find your way out of the situation. This is what God told this king. You don't think God's got control of these kings? Ah. I want you to know he's got control of this president. Don't you think this president is going to be able to do anything and everything he wants to do? He'll do it if God wants him to do it or allows him to do it. Say amen or amen. Amen. If he can set one president in the office and remove another one, guess what? He's God. And guess what? He'll probably remove this one in four years. I want you to know that. God will do what he wants to do. Because he's God. He removes kings and queens and presidents at his own time. Remember this, my friend. It says here, the Bible will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from the Bible. The wide L movie. God uses dreams to keep us from committing sin. As we continue, thirdly, God told Abimelech, restore Abraham's wife. Now, therefore, restore this man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. He said, I will kill every one of you if you don't restore her. Well, I'll tell you what, you don't want to get on God's bad side. <laughs> you don't want to get on God's bad side. I appreciate what my 
nephew said the other day, I was reading some of this. Two of my nephews were talking about their moms and dad, how they used to take them to church. And this one in Tennessee, he spoke up and he said, you know what? He said, I don't drink. And he said, I don't smoke marijuana or nothing like that. And then he was talking to the other nephew. He says, wow, that's really neat to hear that. Now, this is a probably 40, 50-year-old nephew, 50 years old, that age, right? Never drank, never smoked. One, one, one of the reasons why, he said, my mom used to take me to Uncle Vernon's church and he'd preach all over me. <laughs> Uncle Vernon would preach. He said, my goodness. He'd preach at us. And he said, that's why I never did it. I'm proud of him. How about you guys? Can you say that? <laughs> Retain his integrity. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> all them nephews used to come to church. Oh, I used to preach at them all. I'd preach hell so hot they could fill it in the pews. Can you say that? <laughs> I'd preach it so hot it'd be licking on, on their toes. Right? I mean, you know what I'm talking about? But guess what? They've retained their integrity, can you say that? There's a lot of people over the years have told me, said, I'm so glad that I went to hear your preaching. I want you to know that. A lot of people over the years. Let's look on. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, have we sinned? Yes. Everyone has sinned. Everyone has fallen short of God's glory. The Bible said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You have a choice. Either live for God with your integrity, with your purity, or not live for God. It wasn't too long ago the person that attended this church came to me. And when he came to me, this is probably a year ago, maybe a little bit more than a year. He said, Pastor, I had this dream last night and I want to talk to you about it. He said in the dream I was walking down the corridors of this hallway. And he said, it looked like an abandoned motel. He said, at each of the rooms he passed by, he'd look into this room, and it was completely dark. Then he'd look on this side, and it was completely dark. And he said, finally I got to towards the end of the hallway, <coughs> and I saw this light in one of the rooms. And as I walked into the room, I saw a note or words. And it said, your time is near. Set your house in order. Your time is near. Set your house in order. And he said, I don't know what that means, Pastor. <laughs> and I had to share it to him that day that it means one or two things that God is going to do something different in your life, or he's going to take your life. I said, it's probably going to be the one he's going to. Because he's telling you to set your house in order. It wasn't long after that that his wife passed away. And then a month after her passing away, he died. I probably never told you. But it gives you an idea of how God brings dreams into people's lives. He 
just never know. I believe both of them are in heaven, can you say that? Amen. Amen. But I want you to know that judgment came. Did I pray hard that he would recover from this? I did. I prayed every chance I got a hold of him, I would pray and rebuke that sickness in his body and command life to come back into it. But it's like I was praying up against a brick wall. And the Holy Spirit would come and tell me, he says, says, I'm not going to allow it to happen because this is the judgment of God. Sometimes God stops me and he won't let me heal people in his name. He'll stop me from doing it. Because it's their time to go. It's just their time. It hasn't been easy for our church. It hasn't been easy at all. They were a precious family. I didn't tell anybody about the dream except the day of the funeral and I told her, I think it's daughter and one or two of the other relatives that he knew this day was coming. He knew it was coming. Aren't you glad that God will give some of you an idea what's going to happen to you? Yeah. Instead of shocking you? At least he gave him a forewarning. As God gave this king, mm -hmm. he gave him a warning. He said, you touch that woman, I will kill you and everything that you have. I will desolate you. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. So that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So therefore, confess your sins. You got a problem with somebody, you need to go to them, tell them. You need to tell them where they can forgive you. And where you can forgive. And move on from. Because let me tell you something one day. You're going to stand before God. And he's going to ask you, why didn't you go? Why didn't you go and solve this problem? Amen? Am I still your favorite pastor? I saw that answer. <laughs> I love you guys watching. <laughs> but God laid this on my heart. He really did. Laid it on my heart. Dreams of the Bible. Would you pray with me, Lord? Yes. I thank you for the dreams you've given us. I thank you for allowing us to interpret these dreams. <laughs> I know, Lord, you've used me over and over to interpret dreams for people. I want to say thank you for allowing me to, to know these things. Sometimes it hurts, oh Lord. I want you to know it breaks my heart that I know that you're going to take them. But I still count it an honor that you do that. You haven't done this once to me, but you've done this probably many, many times over the last four or five decades I've been preaching the gospel. <coughs> You'll send someone with me with a dream like that. And I would interpret it for them. I thank you for allowing me to be there. I can't say it doesn't hurt, it does. But I know it's something that needs to be done. 
So I ask you now, Lord, that you remember these that have dreams. Oh, God, that you move on their hearts. Move on their hearts. And above all, let them confess their sins to Jesus Christ. If God has given you a dream like that, you need to repent immediately. You need to ask God to forgive you immediately. The Lord Jesus is calling you now. If God is giving you a dream like that, you need to repent now and ask him to forgive you. Oh, Father, I thank you again for the Son. And the Son, I thank you for the Father. Maybe there's someone at home or someone here at church that's been away from the Lord. The Bible says, draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. Come closer to me, and I will come closer to you. Come. And allow God to be part of your life again. Come and accept the Lord in your life. Call up on the Lord now. All you have to say to the Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. I am so sorry. Please forgive me. In your name, amen, amen. And would everyone else pray that prayer with me? In the name of Jesus, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. Fill me with thy spirit. Fill me with thy spirit. Let me walk in thy integrity. Let me walk in thy integrity. And thy holiness. And thy holiness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe you're saved. Can you say amen? amen. I believe you're born again. Amen. It wasn't too long ago, only about five years ago, another person came to me. And they had a dream. And this person said, I saw myself laying in my bed. I was dead. He said, what do you think that means, Pastor? I said, are you ready to meet the Lord? He said, oh, I am. I'm ready to go. If that's what God chooses, so let it be. I said, well, why don't we pray? Maybe God changes his mind. Two weeks later, he died. When I went to his home, I saw him laying in the bed. The same dream. That's tough stuff. That's why it's important. <coughs> Be faithful to God. Do not criticize your brothers or sisters. You love each other with all your heart, soul, and mind. As God commanded you to love them. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me as we prepare for a final? May the Lord bless this time as we depart. May he have his hand upon us as we draw closer to him this week, as we give him the glory and the honor and praise. Go with each one of us, Lord. Bring us back to the appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless.